Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Friday. Let's cheer for finally getting to see the PlayStation 5. Yeah. Oh, come on, get, put, put some gusto into it, Evan. Yesterday, Sony had their big unveiling of not just a bunch of games for the PS5. We also got a look at the console itself. It was definitely a bold choice. Don't see a lot of consoles with fins anymore. You know, that might've been video games back in the 50s, but uh, we've advanced. The design drew praise from some, I liked it. I thought it, I thought it worked. The way I thought about it, at first I was taken aback, and then I thought of the idea of finding one in 20 years in a Goodwill, and I'm like, that's gonna look awesome covered in dust. And I'm not even joking. Yeah, <laughs> kids in, tw in 30 years are gonna look yeah. at this and be like, oh my God, this is the most 20s thing ever. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Sony also announced that there are going to be two different versions of the PS5, one with child and one without. Uh, there's going to be a traditional disc-based one and an all digital. So that's big news. We've seen Microsoft do this yeah. with the Xbox One. Obviously, Sony decided it was time to. Sorry, GameStop. That really uh, is bad news for them, though. You know, it, it's just more and more just a nail in the coffin. We've been waiting for this moment for so long, I feel like, since the promise of the, the original original Xbox One when yes. they got all that flack for for the rumors even being that they would remove the disk drive. You know, we didn't get a price of either console though still, right? Maybe Sony's still playing chicken with uh, Microsoft to see who blinks first? You announce a price. No, you. No, you. Oh God, our cars are about to collide. <laughs> yeah, folks are going to be lined up outside to buy it and the, the employee's going to be like, I don't know how much it costs. I can't sell it to you. <laughs> Every person has to haggle for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you three sheep and my daughter. <laughs> but of course, what really matters are the games. Mm -hmm. And Sony, I, I think they more or less deliver the goods. Uh, new Spider-Man game, well, new Spider-Man content, we'll get to that later. Plus uh, Horizon Zero Dawn sequel, the eighth Resident Evil game, yeah. and a remake of Demon's Souls. So yeah. I, I think they brought some thunder. Yeah, I think that everybody was holding out for this, this great reveal. And I think there was a lot of pressure for Sony to deliver and they definitely did. Yeah, and not only from first party studios, which we'll talk about later. Oh and an expanded version of Grand Theft Auto V. If you didn't buy it for the PS3 or the PS4 or when it was free on the Epic Game Store or on an Xbox, probably on the Switch soon. So now's your millionth chance to play it. I still have not finished it. I got to the guy in the trailer park and it hit a little too close to home. So <laughs> I, I put it down. I, I, like, I like the story a lot. Actually, when I heard the voiceover in the very beginning, I was like, is this it? Is this the story DLC that was rumored and then basically lost its place to on Online. But GTA aside, this presentation was Sony doing what it does best, dramatically busting out high quality exclusives, uh, at least some of them. And while they've been knocked for being too slow to roll out details of the PS5, I feel like this presentation definitely quieted that criticism. They, they gave us a big, a big old meaty one. Yeah, it is kind of fun. Like when it all was theoretical, it's like the playing field seemed so even. Well, and also I think Sony laid some groundwork because they had a lot of good like original IP in the last generation they had Horizon Rise and Zero Dawn. So now it's automatically exciting that we're going to get a sequel to that. Whereas I feel like Microsoft is going to have to kind of introduce a lot of new exclusives this generation. They might be good, but they won't kind of have that built in goodwill. So let's run down the highlights of what we saw. One of the big reveals was Spider-Man Miles Morales putting Miles front and center of the game. Uh, best of all, it's out this holiday season, but is it a proper sequel? I don't know. It's an expansion. The, the word's still out on on just how substantial that expansion is, yeah. is going to be, yeah. right? And that was the question. Is it a proper sequel? I think everybody got that impression from the reveal. Now Sony says, eh, not exactly. Executive Vice President Simon Rudder said it's more of an expansion to the PS4 game and kind of a remaster too. He described it as more akin to an expansion bolted onto an upgraded version of the original title. It feels like a house that they're adding on to. Hey. How's it going? Uh, actually, as of this morning, Insomniac Games said that Spider-Man Miles Morales is going to be a standalone title. So it's kind of an oversight on our part. Um, but yeah. Another highlight I was super excited about was the announcement of an actual sequel, Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West, and it involves uh, Aloy moving west to a far future America. 
which at this point, I'm not sure what that looks like. We didn't get a release date, but Horizon Zero Dawn was one of the crown jewel exclusives of the PS4. So this one's going to be pretty highly anticipated. We also heard about the next Ratchet and Clank game, Rift Apart, uh, also from Insomniac Games. It's also working on Spider-Man Miles Morales. They're busy these days. Yeah. Uh, well, depending on how, how good the Miles Morales expansion is. But the key feature of the new Ratchet and Clank is letting you open dimensional rifts and jump into new environments seem Seamlessly, definitely seems designed to show off the PS5's loading speeds. And I think they even talk about how this game, this would only have been possible on the PS5. When he's going through the different portals and how much changes like between yes, each one, yes. I didn't realize, well, the first time I watched it, like, oh wait, this is gameplay? And I was I was taken aback by it. That's honestly. cool. They also announced Resident Evil 8. Well, it's called Village Resident Evil, and that's coming out next year. It'll take the gameplay back to a first person perspective. And honestly, it'll have some big shoes to fill after Resident Evil 7. I think when this got announced, Amir ascended. Speaking of that, I was watching Patrick's reaction when uh, he reacted to the remake of Demon's Souls, which oh, <laughs> before yeah. he even knew what it was, he was like, Demon Souls, damn! But yeah, so uh, the remake of Demon's Souls, also a big headline. That's going to come from Blue Point Games and Sony's Japan studio. If you have never played it, it was it was kind of the big sleeper hit back in 2009 for the PS3. It's kind of under the radar. Then everybody played it and they're like, hey, this game kind of rules. And then it was, of course, the precursor to Dark Souls, which, of course, was one of the most important games ever made. I, I feel safe saying that. And we've been hearing about a remake for Demon's Souls for a while now. Certainly looked promising. I mean, it looked... I I don't know. This this game was begging for a remake, so I'm glad to see it. And of course, since every new console needs a racing game, they announced that Gran Turismo 7 is in the works. A description said it builds on 22 years of experience to bring you the best features from the history of the franchise. Yeah, I mean, I have 22 years of journalism experience, but like two of those were just writing about pumpkin festivals and covering wrecks on the side of the road. That's hard hitting. Thank you. <laughs> they also showed off a new little big planet game, or at right. least one from that universe. Universe. It's called Sackboy, a big adventure. And it looks more more of a straight up platformer, this one, without all the build your own stuff and all that. But uh, it looks good. I, I don't know. I, I like that universe and it's always fun to play in. Yeah. Another big headline was Hitman 3, which is coming in January of next year. Agent 47 returns and IO Interactive described it as the dramatic conclusion to the World of Assassination trilogy and takes players around the world on a globe trotting adventure to sprawling sandbox locations. I love those games. I love what IO has done done with them and I'm really looking forward to that. Square Enix also unveiled a new game from the team that made Final Fantasy 15. It's from the studio Luminous Productions and it's called Project Athea. Looks kind of Actually, there was a lot of jumping. In a blog post, studio director Takeshi Aramaki described it as a thrilling otherworldly adventure. He said it's gonna be action-packed and at times twisted, tempestuous, and forbidden. It'll have that tattooed on its forehead. We also saw a horror game called Ghostwire Tokyo from Tango Gameworks that's coming out next year and a new Oddworld game, Oddworld Soulstorm. Also announced a game called a Pragmata from Capcom that's coming out in 2022. The trailer was pretty abstract and more than a little Kojima-ish. And it yeah. did to ask the question, what if a cat was translucent? Uh, there was more stuff announced in the presentation. We're just kind of uh, hitting the highlights. Overall, definitely the big reveal that we've been waiting for from Sony. Uh, it, it To me, it seemed to recapture a lot of the momentum that they had kind of lost to Microsoft. They had kind of been dribbling out little bits of information about the Xbox Series X just a little at a time. And, and it felt like, you know, uh, for, the, for the last several months, they had been kind of winning things or at least just showing us more of, of what we could expect. But Microsoft's game reveal last month fell flat with gamers with some solid third-party titles, but nothing super eye-popping. You've probably seen that footage two dozen times on this channel. Yeah, they obviously have first-party games in the works, but honestly, it seems like they should have led with that? I, I don't know. Marketing, it's a big part of rolling out a new console. You want to, you got to kick things off with a bang, lead with your heavy hitters. Do you think they were watching yesterday and they were like, we could have opened with GTA 5? Are you me? <laughs> yeah, it feels like Microsoft is leaning once again on the hardware and the value of Game Pass rather than any one particular game. But while Sony again established itself as a place for exclusives. Yeah, it makes sense because yeah, that's kind of what made PS4 such a big deal and pouring money into exclusives basically forces people to look at all the pretty shiny games you got over there. Not that everything announced yesterday was an exclusive. There were definitely multi-flats in there. Uh, Hitman 3, Resident Evil 8, just to name a few. But I think Sony did a good job of sprinkling enough exclusives in there to make it feel like all the 
the big stuff was coming to PS5. Right, yeah. But it is not all lost for Microsoft. They hopefully have learned from their mistakes in the last generation, and they've been on a huge acquisition spree over the last few years, buying up some really well-respected studios. It's just that we haven't seen all those games yet. Uh, Microsoft's next digital event is set for July. As of right now, when it comes to the marketing wars, it looks like Sony's back on top. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a PS5. Sided. This, this did kind of sell it. I have a PC. I don't need an Xbox Series X. Uh, Evan, did it sell it for you? I think the thing I keep coming back to is that Ratchet and Clank trailer. I think that's like the only game that we saw that was really like, look at what this thing can do. Those types of techniques applied to God of War right. is gonna be phenomenal. Right. Sony has never let me down with a console. I've never like regretted buying a PlayStation. Yeah. I definitely have with other companies. So it feels like, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, you haven't you haven't let me down yet. I'll, I'll trust you again. Let's talk about the next generation of consoles. Again, we're just as tired. No, no, we're excited. Can't you hear it? <laughs> oh, that's right. You're right, I mean... we're excited. Woo! Woo! Z Z I, yeah, I switched to uh, excited mode this morning. Can you hear it? Are you drunk? Are you on the wine again? My man, 